The sorcerer wields a mastery over the elements of fire, ice, and lightning. With these elemental weapons, the sorcerer can deal devastating damage on the battlefield, and in this video, I want to provide three sample builds which might be worth checking out in the upcoming Diablo 4 beta. As a disclaimer, there are no dedicated Blizzard-endorsed Diablo 4 talent calculators out there. So the talents we see could change, and as a matter of fact, I had to redo this recording because the talents did change um, as of yesterday when the pre-install happened, so I don't know if some sort of data mining happened then, but I had to re-record this to get these builds close or accurate to what we're going to see in the beta. I'll leave a link to the talent calculator in the description along with each build shown. Finally, for these builds, I will be looking at a character who is level 50 with no bonus renowned skill points. I understand our characters will be capped at level 25 for the betas, but this will hopefully function as a template in the future. As a brief overview of the sorcerer and what she's all about, each skill has a basic effect and an improved passive enchantment effect. These enchantment effects will provide their passive effect to all of the skills that you're using, not just the one that the enchantment came from. So for example, if you're using Firebolt, the enchantment effect of Firebolt applies to all of your skills, not just Firebolt. Now moving into our first build, I'm going to call this a Barrier Mage or Barrier Sorcerer. This is a Frost Sorcerer build that is a pretty balanced build with decent single target, decent AoE, but more importantly, it has a lot more survivability. For our basic skill, we're going to be taking Frostbolt, of course, and this is just going to throw out a Bolt of Frost at an enemy, dealing a little bit of damage and chilling them for 15%. The enchantment effect causes any direct damage from skills to apply up to 30% chill. And speaking of chill, once, once a certain chill threshold has been reached, the enemy becomes frozen, meaning that they're essentially stunned for a little bit, but there are also some other interactions with frozen enemies in this build. We're going to enhance Frostbolt with two upgrades, the first being Enhanced Frostbolt. This causes Frostbolt to deal a little bit of AoE damage whenever it hits enemies, uh, but that chance to deal that AoE damage is increased to 100% against frozen enemies. And finally, we're going to be taking Flickering Frostbolt. This causes Frostbolt to make frozen enemies vulnerable for three seconds. This build also has some interactions with vulnerability, so this being applied to Frostbolt is pretty relevant. Next, for our core skill, this is where a lot of the damage in this build is going to be. We're going to be taking Ice Shards. Now, some of the numbers on Ice Shards have been removed since this last talent dump. Previously, this used to read that Ice Shards launches five shards that deal 25% damage each, and that damage on the ice shards is increased by 25% to frozen enemies. And if that were the case, hitting an enemy with your full barrage of ice shards was going to deal a ton of damage. The ice shards enchantment effect, which is the one that we're going to be taking here, this causes ice shards to automatically conjure and fly towards frozen enemies. So I assume what this means is anytime you freeze an enemy, a, an ice shard is going to form and just automatically target that enemy. We're going to be taking the two upgrades and one of these is very important and you're going to see why barriers are relevant in this build. So the first is enhanced ice shards. This causes ice shards to have a 15% chance to ricochet to another enemy, and ice shards will always ricochet off of frozen enemies. So already you can see that this is providing a little bit of cleave to ice shards. This really helps our AoE in this build. But the most important talent in this build is greater ice shards. While you have a barrier active, casts of ice shards treat enemies as if they were frozen. So by having a barrier active, your ice shards are going to be, be dealing increased damage and they're also always going to be cleaving off of your enemies as long as you have a barrier active. Next, let's look at our defensives. This is going to be our first barrier. We have ice armor. This causes a barrier of ice to form around you for six seconds, absorbing up to 30% of your base life. And while the armor is active, 10% of the damage you're dealing is added to the barrier. We're taking two enhancement in ice armor, the first being enhanced ice armor, which is that whenever ice armor is active, your mana regeneration is increased. Um, and lastly, there's mystical ice armor, which causes damage dealt to vulnerable enemies to contribute extra damage to ice armor's barrier. Currently, it's hard to see if this mystical ice armor is going to be relevant. If not, this can probably be dropped for a later passive to increase our damage. We are going to be taking a passive talent in here called Glass Cannon. 
This is going to cause you to deal 18% increased damage, but take 9% increased damage. With all the barriers that we're going to be running in this build, I think that 9% damage taken is, um, is, is, it's fine. Next, moving into our conjuration skills, we have ice blades. Ice blades causes a pair of ice blades to form for six seconds that rapidly slash enemies for 31% damage and have a chance to make them vulnerable for two seconds. The enchantment effect on ice blades has been reworked slightly, so I'm not entirely sure how this reads, but based off of my interpretation of it, Whenever you use a cooldown, there is a chance to spawn ice blades on random enemies. You're going to have a chance to summon ice blades on random enemies, and then that's going to mean that you have more chances to apply vulnerability to enemies. We're going to be taking enhanced ice blades, which causes ice blades cooldown reduction whenever they're hitting vulnerable enemies to be increased. But also we're taking summoned ice blades, which is uh, building off of that enhancement effect or that enchantment and it's going to make that cooldown reduction apply to all of your skills. There are two passes that we're going to be taking here. One is the align the elements. We're only taking one point in this because we want the, the talent afterwards. But this makes it so that you gain damage reduction against elites each second you haven't taken damage from one. Um, and then secondly, we have protection. Whenever you use a cooldown, you gain a barrier for 30% of your maximum life for five seconds. Moving into mastery, we're going to be taking blizzard. Uh, this makes it so that you summon a storm that deals a lot of area of effect damage and it's going to continuously chill enemies for 6 seconds. The enchantment effect reads that every 15 seconds a, a blizzard will just form and follow you for 4 seconds, basically meaning that your AoE passive damage is increased. We're going to be taking enhanced blizzard which is going to increase our uh, blizzard's damage to frozen enemies. This only reads 2% damage increase, but I have to assume that that's a bug currently because that does not seem very strong. But we're also going to be taking Wizard's Blizzard, which is a cool name. And while you have an active Blizzard, your core skill uh, mana cost is reduced by 10%. This means that we're going to be able to cast more of our Ice Shards. And if we have a barrier active, our Ice Shards are going to be cleaving like crazy. So this is a really solid uh, passive talent. Next up is our ultimate skills and we're going to be taking Deep Freeze. This causes you to encase yourself in a block of ice, becoming immune to damage for 4 seconds and continuously dealing AoE damage. When Deep Freeze expires, it's going to deal an additional burst of damage. The first passive talent in here is Prime Deep Freeze. This is a new passive before it used to read that while you were in Deep Freeze, it would heal you. But now it seems to have been reworked into a... Um, a barrier effect after deep freeze ends which could be nice but we're already generating so many barriers that I don't think that this is going to be necessary so essentially I think that you we might be able to transition this talent point into one of our passive talents here for more damage we have permafrost which is going to cause your frost skills to deal increased damage to elite so we could put it here but we also are going to have hoarfrost which causes us to deal increased damage to chilled enemies which we're going to be constantly chilling enemies uh, but also it's dealing increased damage further to frozen enemies. And finally for our capstone, we're going to be taking Avalanche. Avalanche makes it so that on a lucky hit with your frost skills, you have a chance to make your next cast of Ice Shards, Frozen Orb, or Blizzard consume no mana and deal increased damage. And that chance to proc is doubled against vulnerable enemies, giving us that synergy with vulnerability. And finally for our Paragon board, we have two options I think we can go for. The first is a more offensive build, and this is Frigid Fate. This kind of plays into that Avalanche playstyle, where dealing damage to vulnerable enemies increases your lucky hit chance, um, so you'll be able to proc more free Ice Shards, more free Blizzards, and just overall increase your damage that way. The second option for Paragon Board is Icefall, and this makes you generate a barrier for um, a percentage of your max health whenever you kill an enemy. Or sorry, not whenever you kill an enemy, you have a chance to proc a barrier. So it's a little bit of randomness to it, but it's still a nice defensive option to consider. The second build I want to show is a Fire Sorcerer build, which primarily functions on burning enemies, causing them to take damage over time, and then some skills consuming that damage over time effect to deal big damage. So for our basic skill, we're of course going to be taking Firebolt. This just fires a Flame Bolt that deals a little bit of direct damage, but it applies a damage over time effect, which lasts for 8 seconds. The Enchantment effect, which is the one that we want to take, causes any direct damage from your skills to apply up to an additional 23% burning damage effect over 8 seconds. So immediately you can see by taking this enchantment effect on Firebolt, your other skills will be applying damage over time effects. 
we take two passive effects for Firebolt. The first is Enhanced Firebolt, which is causing your Firebolt to pierce through burning enemies. So this is just a little bit of extra cleave. Uh, but more importantly, there's Glinting Firebolt, which causes critical strikes with Firebolt to increase the burning damage you're dealing to enemies by 20% for 4 seconds. Getting into our core skills, we have Fireball, and this is going to hurl a giant Fireball, which is going to deal a decent amount of damage to surrounding enemies. And when it's enchanted, this will cause you to, whenever you passively kill an enemy, they explode, dealing fire damage. We then enhance Fireball to increase the radius base on the distance traveled. But more importantly, there's Greater Fireball, which causes Fireball to deal 50% of the burning damage you've applied to enemies as additional direct damage. This is a warning, there could be some anti-synergy with Greater Fireball with this build, so this is something that I really wanted to try playing around with inside of the beta. So we'll see if we want to take Greater Fireball in the end, or if we would maybe take Destructive Fireball, because again, the direct damage from Fireball is going to apply a bleed, and if it's uh, if we're going to be crit striking harder, it's going to apply a bigger, bigger damage over time effect, which could have some synergy. But for now, I'm assuming that Greater Fireball might be a solid option. For our defensives, we're going to be taking Flame Shield. This causes you to engulf yourself in a, in a shield of flames, but it only reads for two seconds. I have to assume it's a little bit longer than that. And while the shield is, uh, is lasting, you will burn surrounding enemies for 7% damage per second. Currently, I'm not too sure if it's worth investing much into Flame Shield. The passive effects for it seem to have been reworked, and previously it used to read that the damage effect from uh, Flame Shield would persist, helping you build up that stacking damage over time effect to have extra synergies with the build. But since that was removed, I'm not entirely sure about this Flame Shield currently. But as for the passive effects, I think we could still maybe take Glass Cannon. Again, this is going to cause us to deal 18% increased passive damage, but we will take 9% more damage as a result. If we're not taking Flame Shield, this could be a little sketchy to take, uh, but in PvE, I think it should be fine with all the healing potions that we'll have. But we're going to move into our Conjuration skills next, and we will be taking Hydra. This will summon a three-headed Hydra for eight seconds, and each head will spit fire at enemies. And once enchanted, after spending a certain mana threshold, you will spawn a three-headed Hydra. We want to take this enchantment effect on Hydra because this is going to increase our passive burn damage. Once enhanced, while you're healthy, your Hydras gain an additional head. This just means an extra head to spit more fireballs at your enemies. But we can also enhance this with Summoned Hydra, which causes your Hydras to burn enemies for additional damage. Moving into our mastery section, we are going to be taking Firewall. Previously, I thought about taking Meteor, but since I think the last talent dump, Firewall has been buffed, and it reads that it deals 160% uh, damage, which is a lot, over 8 seconds, and the enchantment effect is each time an enemy takes burning damage, there is a chance to spawn two firewalls underneath them for a number of seconds. We want to take this enchantment effect because we're going to be applying a lot of burning damage over time, so there's there should be a decent chance to spawn additional firewalls. We then enhance this with enhanced firewall. This will cause enemies to take increased burning damage whenever they're standing in firewall. And lastly, there's mage's firewall, which causes enemies to continue burning for five extra seconds after leaving firewall. For ultimate, we're going to be taking Inferno, which causes a fiery serpent that continuously constricts around the area. Uh, this is going to burn enemies for a lot of damage over eight seconds. Um, we can then enhance this with Prime Inferno, which is going to cause it to pull enemies closer to the center. And finally, with Supreme Inferno, this causes your Pyromancy skills to cost no mana while Inferno is active. So for 8 seconds, you're going to be able to spam whatever skills you want as long as they're not on cooldown. We will be taking a couple passives here. The first is Fiery Surge. This causes killing a burning enemy to increase your mana regeneration by a small amount for 3 seconds. Um, we're only taking one point in this to just get to the next talent. And that is Endless Pyre. This causes you to deal increased burning damage to enemies for each second they remain burning up to 18%. And then finally for our capstone, we have Combustion. This is new uh, and it causes your burning effects to deal increased damage per unique source of burning you have applied to the enemy. If a certain burning threshold has been met, that damage bonus is doubled. For a Paragon board, there's one clear option and that is Burning Instinct. Your burning damage is increased by a uh, percentage of your critical strike damage and further increased by your intelligence. 
The final build is a lightning-based sorcerer build. This build will focus on generating a mechanic called Crackling Energy. When these energies are collected, they reduce cooldowns and restore mana, which is making this a very spammy build. For our basic skill, we're going to be taking Spark. This causes a lightning bolt to launch forward that shocks enemies four times, dealing a little bit of damage per hit. The enchantment effect reads that killing an enemy has a 10% chance they form a crackling energy. We're going to take both enhancements and the first one is enhanced spark which causes each time spark to hit a primary target it has a 20% chance to hit up to three additional enemies dealing 6% damage. If there are no other enemies to hit spark instead deals increased damage to its primary target so that's going to increase our damage and single target and both cleave situations. Finally there's flickering spark. Each time Spark hits an enemy, it has a 3% chance to form a Crackling Energy. So it's not the greatest chance, but it is still something to get our Crackling Energy generation going. For core skills, we're going to be taking Chain Lightning. This causes a stream of lightning to bounce between either you or enemies up to four times. It'll obviously prioritize enemies though, but in the case of a single target situation, it can still bounce between you and enemies, making this a little bit of a more decent single target skill. The enchantment effect, and this is one that we want to take, causes chain lightning to form automatically after spending 100 mana. So this is just going to passively increase our, our damage by generating free chain lightnings after 100 mana is spent. We then enhance chain lightning to increase the critical strike chance of chain lightning per bounce. And that critical strike chance is put to use because whenever chain lightning critically strikes, it has a 25% chance of forming a crackling energy. For our defensives, we're going to be taking teleport. This causes you to transform into lightning, becoming unstoppable and surging to a target location, dealing a little bit of damage upon your arrival. Once it's enchanted, this allows your evade skill to be replaced with a short range teleport on a shorter cooldown. Teleport is then enhanced to reduce the cooldown of teleport per enemy hit up to five seconds. And finally, we take mystical teleport. This is going to make it so that your uh, crackling energies hit additional enemies for four seconds after teleporting and that's also something I forgot to mention in the overview is that crackling energy will deal passive damage while it's out to enemies around it and then just like all the other mage builds I've shown so far we're going to be taking glass cannon which is going to increase our damage passively but we're going to take more damage as a result next we're going to move into our conjuration and we're going to be taking lightning spear this causes you to conjure a spear of lightning that seeks out enemies for six seconds dealing damage per hit. When Lightning Spear is enchanted, absorbing a Crackling Energy has a 10% chance to conjure a Lightning Spear. This is the second enchantment we want to take for this build. We then enhance Lightning Spear so that after critically striking, Lightning Spear has a 10% stacking critical strike chance for its duration. And then finally, there looks to be this other enhancement. Uh, the name doesn't seem like it quite made it into this, uh, this talent iteration but collecting crackling energy increases the damage of your next lightning spear cast. Into our mastery skills, we're gonna be taking ball lightning. This causes a ball of lightning to slowly move forward, continuously zapping enemies for a little bit of damage. When this is enhanced, lucky hit critical strikes have a small chance to spawn an additional static ball lightning. Enhanced ball lightning causes the damage tick rate to be increased by 30% of your attack speed. And then finally, we wanna take wizard's ball lightning and this is going to make it so that when you hit at least four times with a cast of ball lightning, a crackling energy is going to be formed, but this can only happen once per, per ball lightning cast. Next, there are a couple of passives that we want to take here. First is Static Discharge. This is going to cause your lucky hit critical strikes with shock skills to have up to a 15% chance to form a crackling energy. This already has some synergies with Lightning Spear because Lightning Spear has a stacking critical buff whenever it critically strikes. So this should kind of feed into that cycle. And then this last passive is Invigorating Conduit. This is going to cause you to generate some mana whenever you pick up a Crackling Energy. For ultimates, we're going to be taking Unstable Currents. I think this skill sounds really fun because it makes it so that for 10 seconds, whenever you cast a Shock skill, a random Core Conjuration or Mastery Shock skill is also cast. We then take both passes for this, which is Prime Unstable Currents. This makes it so that your Unstable Currents increases your attack speed by 25% while it's active, letting you get out more of those random shock skills. And finally, there's Supreme Unstable Currents, and this is going to make it so that while Unstable Currents is active, your Crackling Energy is going to continuously pulse and not consume any charges. And finally, there's the passives here. This is Course and Currents, and this is making it so that hitting enemies with your shock skills increases your critical strike chance by 3%, and it resets upon getting a critical strike. So once again, this might fuel that 
lightning spear critical strike cycle um allowing us to feel a little bit more of our um our crackling energy generation so i think coursing currents is a pretty important passive to have and then for our capstones, we have overflowing energies. This makes it so that crackling energies hit one additional enemy, and each time crackling energy hits an enemy, your shock skill cooldowns are reduced by a little bit, and that uh, that reduction is increased when it's hitting elites. And finally, the Paragon board, we have Ceaseless Conduit. This makes Crackling Energy have a chance to not consume a charge when they're triggered. Crackling Energy's damage is increased by a little bit more of your intelligence. Let me know what you think of these builds and if any sound like ones you want to play. I have a few more of these sample builds coming for each class, so if that's something you're interested in checking out, consider subscribing to stay notified. It really, really helps a small channel out like mine. But this was Gruber Troy saying thanks for watching, and I hope to see you all in the next video.